Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Flippin' Through. In this episode, I'm going to be flipping through Mad Magazine number 91. It was released in December 1964, and it cost 25 cents, which is indeed, it should be noted, cheap. Uh, so this issue, um, I picked this one out because it has, well, one, it was in my double stack and it was easy to get to, um, but this is uh, one of my favorite covers. It's um, obviously a massive block of text. Uh, and it says last issue, but of course, if you look a little more closely, there's some fine print. If you think our last issue was bad, wait till you read this one. Um, this issue is, is similar to another one that they had, I believe around the same time, uh, where it just had the word sex, just really huge right in the, kind of like, I think it was like right up in this area. And then there was, of course, subtext that said, like, some magazines resort to cheap tactics like sex to sell magazines, but we would never do that. Um, you know, uh, Mad Magazine always did, uh, I think, a good job of, one, poking fun at themselves, but also putting on airs, which was, uh, I don't know, pretty amusing. So uh, let's just get right into this. Uh, so we have... Look at this lovely, uh, lovely ad for the, you see the Ballantine, probably the Ballantine books, or Signet uh, paperback books. Um, and the most confusing table of contents of all time, as I continue to say. So uh, we have, I'm not gonna go over that, I wanna just get into it. Um, now there are a few things on this page that really jumped out to me, the first being, um, this was when they were doing the Mad Magazine campaigns, Alfred E. Newman for president. Um, now, this is what I have to say. If I were in charge of Mad right now, what I would do is uh, I would have, I don't know, some upcoming issue. What I would do is I would have uh, subscription inserts, but with the subscription insert, um, perhaps on like the other side, because it it extends through the magazine, I would have some sticker like this, like Alfred E. Newman for president, maybe that same um, ratio, you know, it's like a, basically like a note card size. So you could either do um, like a campaign sticker where you have him, you know, with his big ears. Look at that, that's beautiful. You could do Alfred E. Newman for president, or you could have it um, like that with text in the head. And I would, that's what I would do. And I would make them stickers, maybe nice, uh, either just like one sheet. Um, that's got to be cheap. They got to be able to do that. And I would insert it in all of them. And uh, I would call it a day. Then I would encourage people to stick them everywhere stick them on lampposts, stick them on bumpers your bumper, stick them on your neighbor's bumper, stick them on a uh, mailbox, maybe not a mailbox, I think that's vandalism, uh, put them anywhere, that's what I would do. Anyway, these are awesome. You know, I, I haven't seen many of the um, campaign posters or even these lapel tabs, um, probably because, I mean, those are probably the flimsiest out of all of them. I have seen some of these buttons uh, floating around. I don't personally own them or own any of them. And then this mad Christmas grab bag. I love this. I wish, you know, there's some really cool stuff. Full color portrait, the mad bust, uh, super special. 20 of the mad paperback books. That is awesome. And then a nine issue subscription. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, let's see. Now this is, um, this is one of those uh, articles uh, from the Inhale Safe Department that has been reprinted a ton and rightfully so. It's awesome. I, I mean, I remember reading this several times as a kid, but not owning this issue when I read it. So 
Uh, let's give it a read. Smoking has been linked with so many horrible sicknesses, you'd imagine that everybody would be giving it up. Not so. Most smokers simply cannot. And so they are now doubly plagued. Not only are they deteriorating physically from smoking, but mentally, too, from worrying about it. In order to help all of these poor trapped souls, we now offer some mad devices for safer smoking. Um, mad obviously has a, I don't, well, maybe perhaps it isn't obvious. Mad has a history of um, kind of like anti smoking, um, poking fun, not even in a good natured way, just like really calling out cigarette companies, um, which, you know, it's pretty awesome. But uh, there are some of these things which are so utterly disturbing. Um, so these are the lung liner tips. I mean, these are disturbing for a number of reasons, least of which is like this terrible, uh, terrible, terrible anatomy uh, where it's just like the throat goes down into this huge, um, this huge cavern inside the, or huge cavity in the chest. Um, and there's also, so it's like they're like little condoms or something. You can see it all packed in there. And then it, as you inhale, it fills up with the air and the smoke. And then you don't get the, the carcinogens and all of that stuff. Um, so uh, this, oh, that's not a, that's just this poor smoker who's being har harmed mentally and physically. Uh, so this is the portable filtration unit, an activated charcoal cigarette smoke filter. And look at how convenient that is. It just fits right in the little backpack. The sad thing about a lot of this is that a lot of people who were smoking at this time and never quit are now carrying around a device very similar to this uh, with a little oxygen um, canister. And uh, instead of the tube going to their mouth, it goes into their nose. And so, I mean, it's like, it really is It's, it's quite sad. Um, but I maybe mean, they could do a good job of uh, making it lighthearted. I guess it's sadder uh, in retrospect than it is in the moment that these were being put out. Now, this is what I'm most excited about because I remember this, and that is the smoke simulators. Um, I mean, this is essentially what you're seeing is Mad Magazine um, invented vaping. Uh, like the vaporizer cigarettes. I mean, it, it's like oil or something. I don't know how it works really, but it superheats them. And then you take the vapor and you that fills your lungs and it's satisfying. And uh, then you exhale it. And that's almost exactly what they are describing in this smoke simulator. Um, the nasal exhaust fan. Um, <laughs> so like... Uh, I don't even know how this is supposed to help really at all. Uh, this guy has it hidden in his beard. So I mean, that just has to smell so terrible. Um, but I loved this, this image right here with the hot lips discourager. Um, there are these really great details of the man uh, with his lips blistering. It's just, it is, it's disgusting. And uh, it's pretty awesome. So, uh, and then, oh, the psychological warfare. So every once in a while they explode. Um, the eject, smoke ejector is, I mean, you know, he, he that's essentially the lung liner, uh, but you know, it's uh, if that's the lowest point in the writing, uh, that's still pretty good. Um, so uh, here, movie heroes are Finks, or hey there, audience, you've been booing the wrong guy. Um, now, uh, the one that I want to focus in on is, uh, this one in the upper right hand corner. Uh, the so-called villain says, I'm going to let you in on a little secret inspector, that drink you just finished. It was poisoned, you know? And, uh, the so-called hero says, has anyone ever told you how ugly you are, Bragson? And as they point out, one... He's being generous. He, he gave him a drink. He's being frank, chatty, and informative. Hey, you just drink poison. Uh, and this so-called hero is gossipy. I mean, has anybody ever told you? That kind of uh, implies that, you know, he's had conversations with people about how ugly he is. 
Um, and he's critical, blunt, and tactless. Uh, and I would, I would certainly agree, uh, certainly agree with that. Uh, a mad look at the Summer Olympics. This is uh, the the mad look at. I mean, after Sergio um, took over, but before he he kind of fell into that like really distinct style. This is still seems like the style of the guy who was doing it previous to Sergio. Um, and I mean, it's you still have that beautiful artwork of his. I mean, he's a, he's a master storyteller um, without using any words at all. Um, and so we have uh, this guy taking the photo, holding the weight down of the strong man. Let's see what else we got here. This is very topical for 1964. Here's the gentleman uh, prancing down with his, uh, not javelin, what the hell is that? Uh, stick, his flipper stick, and, uh, oh, pole vault, pole vault. And uh, we see, oh, look, he's made it over. He's made it out of the USSR Olympic team training camp. I imagine now what it would be, it would be a lot of jokes about um, uh, steroid usage. Uh, with uh, with the Russians, not so much things like this. So, <laughs> oh, I love this. Uh, so this guy's getting all uh, uh, overwhelmed, and uh, he's he's turning red as he's pinning the medals onto these beautiful ladies, and so uh, that woman's had to take over for him. Ooh, inside a celebrity's wallet, um, and. The, we are going inside the least popular Beatles uh, wallet. Um, <laughs> from the desk of Mo, uh, Mo Howard wrote him a letter. Uh, Dear Mr. Starr, thank you for your kind letter. You're the first one to compliment my hair comb in the last 20 years. Everyone else tells me how ridiculous I look. But what do I care? When they say it, I just kick them in the knee and bop them in the head. As for your question about how I go about doing my hair, it's very simple. I just comb it straight forward in bangs using water and a brush. Occasionally, if I want to sparkle, I use seltzer. Incidentally, why would you possibly want this information? Are you and your friends doing a scrapbook of me or something? Are you starting a fan club, a fan club in England for me? If you want, I can send you photos of me smashing heads together or poking eyes out. Let me know, kid. Yours in subtle comedy, Mo, Mo of the Three Stooges. P.S. Regards from Larry and Curly Joe. Oh, that's sad. Curly Joe, poor Curly. Um, wait, oh, 64. Oh yeah, I guess. So I mean, they went through, they went through Curly, and Shemp, and then Curly Joe came along. Jeez, Louise. Um, so just a lot of poking fun at, um, Ringo Starr and, um, which I enjoy because I think he's kind of a dork. Uh, mad guide to little known jobs in television. And so these are, uh, this is somewhat interesting. It's all of like those, um, very, I guess like TV tropes of, um, people, pouring beverages or whispering or reacting like, ooh, ah, and uh, grabbing at things and whispering. Um, yeah, that's all right. It's hard for me to be judgmental of these uh, comedically because it's, um, you know, it's a long time ago. And uh, I, I, like so many of the things, I'm missing the greater context of it. Um, the a fairy tale. Uh, so we got some Don Martin. She smooches the frog. The classic tale of the frog prince. Uh, he swoops her up. They go to the castle and <laughs> he grabs a fly, which is uh, buzzing, buzzing about his head. Uh, the new movie monsters from the business world. Um, I mean, this is like some some beautiful art by Joe Orlando. Um, the humor, the writing. Uh, you know what? This is interesting. This is what I've noticed. 
uh, it's they, they're, Mad Magazine is not very consistent about who gets first billing, the artist or the writer. Um, I mean, I, I have to assume that it's more about who's the bigger draw than uh, that who get, that's the person that gets first billing. But uh, Spy versus Spy, um, one of the more more simple uh, Spy versus Spies, but it is so. This is perfect. The spy exits, white spy exit, black spy goes up, he just falls straight through the rocket. It's nothing but an empty tube. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, the sights and sounds of the USA with uh, Paul Coker Jr. Um, and then Larry Siegel and Frank Jacobs doing the writing together. Um, I'm just scanning this right now to see if there's anything that really stands out. Um, I mean, to me, what always stands out the most is Paul's art. I love it. I think it's like these like sort of like little slightly curved lines that he does are, I find those very, very charming. And then, all right, this is screwed up. This is really screwed up, Don. Uh, the near the near sighted voodoo priest. We have this uh, voodoo priest. Who is, like, what? Well, one first off, there is like the whole thing now where it's like, you know, you. This is in this is in very poor taste to be uh, making a comic about a voodoo priest. But uh, let's let's move on from that because that is not the most disturbing part of it. So uh, he pulls out a needle. <laughs> he pokes the head of this uh, the voodoo baby or the voodoo doll <laughs> that his wife sees and runs and says, "The baby, the baby, what are you doing to the baby?" <laughs> and we see um, what was out of frame earlier was the little the actual voodoo doll. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe, uh, like he does, that's just so, it's so disturbing, but, uh, but I love it, I love it so much, um, yeah, so I'm gonna kind of skip over this, this is, uh, the gag in this is, you know, what if, um, we look back on, on somebody who is, who is starred as, um, in all of these like great movies uh like what if that was actually their life or something along those lines um and uh liz um i can't remember what her last name is who that is it's uh i know somebody will somebody will correct me and that's all that matters is that somebody knows more than i do um so uh these are great. This is, um, I really like Paul in this two panel thing or even one panel, uh, comics, uh, like he did, the, um, uh, the, the figurative language thing, uh, or like the cliches where they're monsters. So bad habit, breaking promises. Um, here's a typical parent about to impress a youngster with the importance of keeping promises he's made. Naturally, the parent does not realize the damage he is about to do. Yes. Dad, I did promise to do all my homework, take out the garbage, and clean my room before I went out to play. Now, if this future senator had learned as a child never to break promises, he'd be compelled to keep those made in his campaign. The nation would be bankrupt in six months. If you elect me, I will increase old age benefits, public housing, close the missile gap, and end poverty. Then I will cut income taxes by 50%, raise the minimum wage, and throwing tantrums um this is almost all a lot of this is shots at politicians which i enjoy uh quite a bit uh why not warnings on all packages um now this is like this is a, a wonderful um what is that time capsule because here we have uh in the upper left there's a lot of talk about putting warnings on cigarette packages to let the poor consumer know what he's in for if he insists upon smoking. Something like this. 
Warning, continued use may be detrimental to health. Um, and I mean, now there's, you know, it's, you know, I don't know, there's, there's warnings all over the place. Some places get really into it and they do like pictures of your lungs or lungs that are be like riddled with cancer. Um, so here we go, Herschel's milk chocolate. Uh, warning, excessive eating may cause pimples. Um, here's a, um, you know, a film projector. Warning, excessive use may lead to loss of friends and even family. Uh, here we go, Canadian Glug. At this time, Canadian Club Whiskey was like, like the punchline of a lot of their jokes. And it's just interesting that Canadian Club was that popular that it was uh i mean it, it must have been like huge at that time caution continuous drinking may lead to continuous drinking um this is on miss clear oil hair coloring bath warning continuous use is imperative otherwise it may become evident that user does uh and then finally uh mad special any typical issue of mad Warning, prolonged use may lead to softening of the brain. My brain is thoroughly softened. Uh, the lighter side of going to the movies. Um, this is like, I think in the one, I, the episode three, you can check it out there. In episode three, I had talked about, um, I believe the, uh, the format of this changing. And I was wondering if in the 90s, they were just reproducing issues of or um, strips from the lighter side of, because instead of getting a whole going to the movies, it would be the movies, family, the telephone, uh, taxes, and you'd get all sorts of uh, different things like that. Uh, twisted Mad Tales for Twisted Readers. Um, I am not going to read through this. Uh, that's sort of like that poem where I, I didn't go in on that. Oh, um, here we have Spy versus Spy and uh, the wonderful gray spy making an appearance. Probably not her first appearance. I wonder what was her first appearance. And uh, one of those short-lived television shows, which, unlike me, it's very unlike me, but um, I did uh, research for this episode and so this was based on a television program in 1963 to 1965 called Mr. Novak. And it was, you know, the, the teacher who goes to school um, to, I don't know, change the children's lives or something. Uh, I mean, it, maybe back then it was an original idea, but at this point it is so played out that idea of, uh, you know, the idealistic teacher going in to shake things up. It's, um, you know, maybe it was really great at the time. Um, and here we have a wonderful black and white um, fold in, and it is, uh, this issue's economy minded black and white one page mad fold in. And so, what's really behind? Oh, ever since Castro's revolution in Cuba, the United States has been taking a beating. Now, whenever trouble erupts in neighboring South American countries, they blame years of U.S. exploitation for all their ills. But there's another reason for the wretched poverty of 99% of people of South America. Fold page in and discover what's really behind South American unrest. Uh, the growing number of violent anti-U.S. riots present, presents a real problem in keeping the peace in poverty-stricken countries of South America. Latin leaders cite U.S. exploitation as the cause. And we fold it in and we see a boot coming down on the peons and it says rich South Americans. The real problem in South America. Well, there you have it. And then um, this... The self portrait. This is the one I would, I mean, this is one of the all time greatest um, cartoons. It's by Al Jaffe. I, I remembered it as being by maybe like Don Martin or, or Duck Edwing or something. But anyway, um, the gentleman is uh, painting out this frame on the sidewalk. He goes up to the ninth floor 
And he hops off and uh, careens down to his death, and that is his self-portrait. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I, I appreciate those of you who, who watch and comment. Uh, you know, it's yeah, you know, it's nice to know that folks are uh, watching it and getting something out of this. Uh, you know, if you have anything, if you have an issue uh, that you would like me to go through, um, if I have it, and I, I have a lot, I, I don't have a complete collection yet, but um, I'll give it a shot. Just leave it in the in the comments if there's an issue you would like me to go through. Otherwise, if you want to subscribe or uh, give a thumbs up or a like to this video, that'd be uh, super. So uh, anyway, toodaloo.